Recently I acquired this Multiplex Fun Cub second hand and I was really only expecting to receive the airframe. However, some nice surprises when I opened the model. One was motor and speed controller all in place. Extra bonus, a nice 2200 cobalt oxide LiPo in good condition. So that's a plus. Another surprise was to find that it had a receiver installed. Now this is the Flysky IA6. Quite an old receiver, but uh, very popular. Also rebranded and sold by Hobby King, I believe, in the Turnergy range. Being an FR Sky guy, that, that wasn't of great interest to me, but I do have installed one of these iRange X multi protocol modules. Therefore, I was able to bind the receiver to my transmitter. That was good news. The other surprise then was having bound and connected the receiver up. I was surprised to see that it was sending telemetry, the receiver battery voltage, from the model. Now, being of a curious mind as I am, I immediately got onto the interweb and googled the IA6 telemetry to discover that it can be modified to more usefully show the flight pack voltage rather than the receiver voltage. Most installations, like mine, are using the BEC from the speed controller to power the receiver. Therefore, it's of more use to be able to know the pack voltage than the receiver voltage. Let's take a look then at what I discovered on the internet and see if we can modify this receiver to suit. There is just this plastic sleeve covering the receiver. That's just stuck on with double-sided tape, so you can carefully remove that. To reveal the internals, it's very nicely made. I'm uh, quite happy with the construction. The part of the circuit which is of interest to us is near this part here. There are two surface mount resistors that constitute a voltage divider network. The input you can see here is labelled as BAT. That comes from the channel 1 connection via a little trace there. The input then of the voltage divider comes from this pin and the output of the voltage divider goes to the analog to digital converter, the value of which is then sent via the telemetry link to your transmitter. What we're going to need to do is to carefully cut this trace and add a wire which will go to the external flight battery. That will be more easily performed under the microscope, I think. In the first photograph, then, we can see it in its original form. And now I've gone ahead and removed some of the solder. Not quite sure what that pad's purpose is, but what I'm going to do is to cut through the traces here and then use that pad joined to the trace as that will better support the wire that we need to add. Wish me luck, I'm going in. There, with things cleaned up, I will check for continuity between here, but I think it's fairly clear. We can see the fiberglass there, that that is no longer connected, and I've cleaned off the end of this trace. I can then apply solder to both of these and attach the wire. Let's re the channel one pin there. Let's go and put some solder on this pad here. and on the end of the trace. Now we can solder the wire onto those two. Let's clean that up and see how it looks. That then looks good to me. I will double check that there's no continuity between the battery connection and that first pin. 
now to work out how to connect this wire to the battery pack. Time now then to see if everything is working okay. Got my speed controller here and a battery which I know is discharged down to the storage value at least. Uh, by the way, uh, recycling in mind uh, for the battery lead, I've taken a bit of this very flexible antenna cable off this old, now useless 35 meg receiver. Transmitter is on. Let's connect up our battery. At the moment, there's just the RSSI. Uh, A1 is the voltage. Let's connect that up now to the last cell position. And it's giving us a voltage there of uh, 11.2 volts. Let's see how close that is to my DMM. Let's find a suitable ground. And we're seeing there a value of 11.36. It's reading a little bit low, but nothing really to worry about. And we can calibrate the value on the transmitter. That's not going to be a problem to us. How are we going to connect this in reality then? What I found on Thingiverse is that somebody has very kindly designed a whole range of balance plug connector housings. All I have to do is to find a pin to poke into there and I'll leave a link in the description to the Thingiverse project where I downloaded these. And that will obviously just plug onto there as I say find a suitable pin to pop into there and we should be good to go. I'll get the thing put together and then we'll do a final wrap up. Back at the fun cub then I've installed the battery and the receiver and of course the little plug there. I've added some bells and whistles to my transmitter and now on the front screen we can see the main battery voltage. If I want to know that voltage without looking at the screen. 11.3 Volts. I've just added on a momentary switch the 11.3 volts. The readout there. Just to check that against the battery voltage then. And there we can see it spot on 11.3 volts. As she said. Finally then I've added an alarm such that when the voltage drops below 11.1 .1 volts, which is 3.7 volts per cell, it will uh, alert me. If I gingerly throttle up now... 11 volts. 11 volts. You can hopefully hear there that it announces the voltage once it drops below 11.1. .1. Hope you found the video of interest and will think about modding your receivers. Thanks for watching.